In this lecture, I want to introduce topographic maps. Specifically, we'll be looking at some examples of topographic maps from here in Ohio, and then also a little bit more in detail, uh, the map that you're using in your topographic map lab assignment, which is assigned during weeks one and two. First of all, topographic maps are a type of reference map. Symbols are used to locate and identify landmarks, topography, and other features. And in the United States, topographic maps are created by the United States Geological Survey. They include both natural features and cultural features. You can see two examples from the mentor area uh, here in Northeast Ohio, where we can see the cultural feature on the map circled in red. That's Lakeland Community College. That's one of the map symbols for a school. You can also see then city names and contour lines and so on as well. And then uh, on the right-hand side, the example from Menor Harbor, Menor, Menor Marina and Menor Harbor, where you can see roadways, street names, and so on, which are also cultural features on the map. The U.S. Topographic Quadrangle map series is one that we use a great deal in many applications, in natural resources management and in geography and GIS. This is the example of the USGS topographic quadrangle map for Metro Ohio. It's part of the seven and a half minute series, which is produced at a map scale of one to 24,000. This means that one inch on the map represents 24,000 inches in reality, or one inch represents 2,000 feet. The map includes a great deal of information beyond just contour lines and elevation and physical features. It also includes uh, several grids, and we'll talk for a moment about what those are and how to read information off of those grids. First of all, latitude and longitude, and we have an additional lecture file uh, that gives you the basics of latitude and longitude if you need a refresher. Um, UTM coordinates, that's the Universal Transverse Mercator coordinate system, which is a global coordinate system you'll learn about later on in the semester, and then the U.S. Public Land Survey system that we'll look at for just a moment a little bit later in the lecture. First of all, the name seven and a half minute series relates to the geographic extent of these topographic maps so that the longitude extent and latitude extent is seven and a half minutes by seven and a half minutes. You can see this up in the upper left and right hand corners of the map where you can see the longitude of this particular map. It starts out over on the right hand side at 81 degrees, 15 minutes and zero seconds west that is west of the global prime meridian and extends seven and a half minutes to the west to 81 degrees, 22 minutes and 30 seconds. In terms of latitude, this particular map starts out and its southern extent at 41 degrees, 37 minutes and 30 seconds and extends north to 41 degrees, 45 minutes north latitude. And that's again a difference of seven and a half minutes. You may locate latitude and longitude lines along the edge of the map frame uh, of any USGS topographic map. In the case of the seven and a half minute series, you can start at the south map extent, that is the lower end of the map frame, and move up the map until you see the degree, minutes, or seconds abbreviation. Latitude is designated every two and a half degrees, or two minutes and 30 seconds. And so every two and a half How to locate longitude on a USGS topographic map. First of all, start at the eastern edge of the map extent, the right side of the map frame, and move to the left until you see the degree, minutes, or seconds abbreviation. Longitude is designated every two and a half minutes. So that point A, uh, circled in green at the bottom of the screen, is at 81 degrees, 15 minutes, and zero seconds west, and point B is at 81 degrees, 17 minutes, and 30 seconds west, a difference of seven and a half minutes. Then each map includes a great deal of supplemental information. So starting over in the lower left-hand section of the map, first of all, it tells us it's produced by the United States Geological Survey uh, using the North American datum of 1983 and the World Geodetic System of 1984. Now what all this means is that uh, the datum is basically a system that has been developed in order to uh, create a model of the globe that we can then produce maps on. You'll learn much more about datums later on in the semester. For now, though, know that that's where you find out what the datum is and when it was produced. The big, the most important two datums in the history of the USGS 
are the 1927 datum that you'll see in some of the older maps, and then also the 1983, which was the first system that was used um, globally in order to create a model of a datum using satellite technology. And that's still kind of the standard datum that's used in mapping. In addition, you'll find more information about the details of how the uh, actual map was created, including the, uh, the magnetic declination. And so you can see at the center of the map sheet what the magnetic declination is, and that's the difference between the geographic North Pole and the geodetic North Pole. Uh, then in the center of the map, there's information about scale. So in this case, it tells you there's a scale of 1 to 24,000. And again, this would mean that one inch on the map represents 24,000 inches in reality, or one centimeter represents 24,000 centimeters in reality. It also tells you the contour interval of 10 feet, which is the difference in elevation uh, between, <clears throat> between contours of uh, 10 feet. So every 10 feet of elevation difference there will be a new contour line. The North American vertical datum of 1988 was also used. Just a comment on that. If you see questions in your labs about which datum is used, we're usually talking about the other datum, uh, the 1983 datum that's used uh, for horizontal positioning, not vertical positioning. Uh, then in the lower left-hand section of the map is the map key, and it shows you a bit more about the map, so wh what do we see in terms of uh, patterns of roads and some markings on the map, things like that. Now, the USGS has a much more detailed map legend and uh, a system where you can go and look at all the symbols they use. They have dozens of different symbols that are used on uh, any of the maps, and, um, and through their website they have more information about that, or you can let us know if you have questions. Um, in addition, there's a map locator uh, quadrangle locator in the lower right-hand so section of the map. So you can see there where it shows um, uh, Mentor, and to the west of that, the uh, topographic quad is called East Lake, and to the south of that, Mayfield Heights, and so on. So that gives you a sense of the, of the position of the particular quadrangle that you're looking at at the time. Another series that USGS produces is the 15-minute series topographic maps. This is a smaller scale map than the seven and a half minute series, point being that the geographic extent is twice as large. And so it's covering 15 degrees of latitude by 15 degrees of longitude. In this case, the map you'll be working with, which is a historical map, is at the scale of 62,500. That's not too far off of an area where, of a map scale where one inch equals about one mile. A scale of one to 63,360 would be one inch represents one mile. I wanted to bring up now that on, on this map we see some examples you can use as cultural features, hence some of the questions in the lab ask you about uh, two different things that you may not be familiar with. One is uh, to uh, estimate the extent of a section of land. And so basically uh, this is uh, something that you can answer without necessarily doing any additional measurements on the map. You can measure it if you want to. Uh, there's no problem with that, but you don't have, need to measure it in order to answer it. The second hint is that cultural features displayed on topographic quads sometimes reflect local land use practices, and in much of the western United States, mountain water sources were dammed and diverted into irrigation ditches in the late 19th century, and there's evidence of this in the Loveland, Colorado area, especially on the 15-minute series map. So see if you can find labels of names of features that might suggest some of the usages of um, water in the area, and land uses. I wanted to comment for a moment on the U.S. Congressional Land Survey because this is part of uh, the map and it's an important part of the features, the cultural features that you see on the map of the Loveland area because uh, the, the road system follows the rectangular grids laid down from the original public land survey. It's also called the American Land Survey System, the U.S. Rectangular Land Survey, and the Township and Range System. It goes back to the Land Ordinance Act of 1785, and Thomas Jefferson uh, set up the initial system with the, with the idea of providing an answer to the question of how land would be settled to the west of the Appalachian Mountains. And so the United States was a new country, and one of the big questions was that there was a significant amount of, the land, of land to the west of the Appalachians in, a, in what would become Ohio, 
Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, and Minnesota, and this became known as the Northwest Territory under the Northwest Ordinance Act of 1787. So the first surveying efforts were actually carried out right here in Ohio in an area not far from the Ohio River called the Seven Ranges, and then secondarily in the uh, Western Reserve Territory in this area of Northeast Ohio. The basic system is based on creating a baseline that runs east and west, and so it typically would follow a, uh, a particular parallel of latitude, and then a principal meridian, which is a line running north and south that follows a meridian of longitude. And the land being surveyed was, was divided into 36 square mile townships. In other words, townships that were six miles by six miles. And then within those townships, there was further subdivision into sections. Sections are one mile by one mile. And most farms were settled in the United States as one quarter sections, and this is especially true after the Homestead Act of 1862. When the initial survey system was put into place, farmers were sold an entire section of land, 640 acres, at $1 an acre, and that proved to be first economically unviable for many people, a significant amount of land of money at the time, and too much land to maintain as well. So in 1862, the Congress passed the Homestead Act in part to encourage settlement of the West during the Civil War, and uh, this allowed people then to start selling in quarter sections. This map shows areas of the United States that were surveyed using the U.S. Uh, public land survey system with principal meridians and baselines. And we'll focus for now on the area that was surveyed in the Loveland, Colorado case because this slide shows the area of the Northwest Territory to give you a sense of um, how the original land survey system was laid out and how it basically works. And it's meant to kind of help orient you towards the meaning of these different survey lines and section numbers and things like that when you see them on a topographic map. So first of all, um, Ohio here uh, had a principal meridian and baseline related to the seven ranges, which was where survey experiments were taken out. By the time uh, the survey system in Michigan and Indiana were being done, the system had been adjusted in some pretty significant ways. Uh, so there are some changes and some differences in how land was surveyed under the public land survey system west of Ohio than it is in this part of Ohio. But in the end, I, I, the important thing that I want you to keep in mind is that each of the townships, so in the example there in the center, the square township 4 north range 2 east, that tells you that particular township is located is located four town lines north of the baseline and two range lines east. And there's a range line every six miles and a township line every six miles. And then each township can be subdivided into sections, and each section can then be subdivided into quarter sections and quarters of quarters and so on. And so things like the phrase like the North 40, for example, if you've ever heard that in relation to agriculture, um, that comes from the subdivision of a uh, of the land into townships, townships into sections, sections into quarter sections, and quarters of quarter sections. Let's focus next on the area that was surveyed along with Loveland, Colorado, so you can kind of get a context of the geographic location of this place and how it relates to the area where it was surveyed. First of all, the baseline and principal meridians that were used to survey Colorado were the, uh, the baseline at 40 degrees north, so the parallel that also forms the border between the states of Kansas and Nebraska, and the sixth principal meridian, which runs through the city of Wichita, Kansas. And so uh, it is far to the east of the location of uh, Loveland, Colorado. So that explains why the range, uh, range lines are uh, 68 to 69 uh, versus the township range of only five to six, because the baseline is only about 30 or 40 miles to the south of Loveland, whereas the principal meridian is several hundred miles to the east. Where you will find the township and range numbers on the sides of the, of the map frame on the U.S. Geographic Topographic Quad um, is basically in red letters, and it's circled there um, on the map. On the bottom, you find the ranges, the range between range 69 to the west and 69, 68 to the west. Uh, there's a red line on the map that designates that, and then there's a small red line that designates in the upper right-hand corner of the map, or of the slide here, Township 5 North and Township 6 North. 
Um, in many ways, with the seven and a half minute quadrangle maps, uh, these are somewhat difficult to read. There aren't too many questions in your lab that ask you to do that, but you're asked to locate one place based on its section number and its latitude and longitude coordinates. But I wanted to give you a sense of um, how the township and range boundaries are on these maps. So in addition to this lecture, be sure that you do the unit reading assignment that has to do with uh, reading topographic maps and reading elevations on a to topographic map. Uh, and then also watch the video, which does an excellent job of summarizing how we visualize three-dimensional space. And we use topographic uh, maps to do that and contour lines to do that as well. And it shows you how to read them, how to make them, and how they're interpolated as well. So that, that concludes this uh, lecture on topographic maps.